Hi everyone, uh, just as Tim said, from Northern Ireland, but I'm actually just back from the US, so I had, um, I'm had i straight off from the flight, I had time for a shave and a shower, so uh, just beat through the traffic, so let's see if I can get through this presentation. Um, Okay, first slide. Um, a little bit of background. First of all, thanks Tim for the invite and the opportunity to come along and talk to uh, OMA. Uh, I think a lot of you have been involved, uh, certainly in the big data analytics, looking at marketing, looking at customers, and you know the value of upselling revenue. Uh, the message I have here today is that my background has been in mobile for the best part of 30 years, and I think it's really important as we look to the future about where over-the-top revenues are coming from and the usage of over-the-top revenues. So SQL's background is all about quality of service and quality of experience. So we started the business four years ago and the way it works is we put software on the end device and we measure the experience of the end user. So what I'm going to do is a two-part presentation. The first part's all about SQL's current business. The second part is about, I think, a challenge to the people in the room about how we take uh, this type of technology forward in terms of being able to grow revenues uh, in the future and also benefits to the consumer. So let me, uh, with that, start the presentation. On device customer insight, as the slide says, all networks, all locations at all times and uh, actionable insights. There's an awful lot of talk in the industry about big data and having been around for a long time in my opinion, it's not just about big data, it's about turning that data into information that can be used. And uh, in my travels around the world as I engage with mobile operators in particular, what they're talking about is, what can I actually do with the information that you've given me? So it's fine having the data. I think a very important part of the closed loop is how do you do the analysis and what actions can you take as a result? And what are the tangible, measurable benefits from that? So with that, a little bit on SQL's overview. It's a, a typical client-server architecture. Uh, it has got two parts to it in terms of a user interface and also the ability to generate reports. And what we do is we push the application through the mobile operator onto the end device. Uh, so in terms of what it, what it looks like, we're really all about measuring the end-to-end -end service performance. So it's really all about performance. What experience are you having when you get on Skype? What experience are you having when you're on YouTube? When you're watching streaming video? When you're on Facebook? Because it's all well and good to roll out new technologies, 3G, 4G, 5G, uh, but the fact is that the consumer doesn't care. All the consumer cares about is, what is the quality of my experience I'm having and what am I paying for? And I think the big challenge for the mobile industry is that if you look around the world, in my opinion, quite a few of the business models are breaking or are close to being broken as we see the over-the-top players coming into the mobile uh, segment. And if you look at teenagers and you ask what services are they using, they don't really care whether it's Vodafone 02 or Wi-Fi or AT&T or Boingo. What they want to know is, is my service working when I want to use it? And for those people who want to spend more on over-the-top services, will I spend more because they're accessible? And so what we're doing is we're looking at the quality of experience and the quality of service end-to-end -end as those users use the service. So how do we do this? We work with the mobile operators, and having been around for four years, uh, there are some challenges. But what we've got to with the lead uh, thinkers in the industry is through their MyOp. I don't know how many of you in the room uh, have looked at, for example, O2 as you travel the world, uh, My Airtel, My Optus, uh, My, My China Mobile. It doesn't matter where you are, a lot of operators, My Do in the Middle East, are looking at this application, which today is really about billing and usage. So if you go to My O2, what they're giving you is my billing, my tax, my usage information. And what we're encouraging them to do to get ahead of this wave of negative feedback from users and customer care challenges, customer service challenges, is why wouldn't you advance this further and start thinking about a second tab on that application that gives you the ability to do customer care, customer service. So now you're into a positive engagement. The other thing that's happening in the industry is that we're seeing a lot of social media. Well, social media is a very positive thing in terms of engaging, but it's only a very positive thing if you can actually address the end user's concerns or if you can answer the question.
if, if you can't answer those questions, it can go very negative. It can come vi virally very negative. And so the key part of this is, do you have the data, do you have the actual information required to diffuse that customer and then take them to a place where they feel they've been looked after and looked after more quickly than you would do without the sort of software that we're describing here. And ultimately, like any sales process, you then can get to marketing, which is once the real estate is actually on the device, uh, let's talk about something that's relevant and targeted as opposed to something that's not relevant. Because I think we all know that there are many challenges with pushing messages to people who don't really have an interest in the actual content that you're providing to them. So that's what we do. We push this application. It's branded by the operator. It ends up on the end device. And today what we're doing is evolving through an improved customer care, customer service experience. An example of that on the, on the screens here, uh, a couple, one on the left is uh, the, the blue one's Optus, the other one's Vodafone, and in early discussions with the mobile operators, what we're saying is you can uh, use this for subjective feedback, you can get questionnaires, you can actually have a Twitter feed from the application so that this customer service rep, uh, as they look at the problem and try and uh, diagnose it, they have a lot more information that's relevant because the measurements that we perform uh, fit into one of four categories. When the question hits the tier one from the consumer, uh, we then say, well, following key words, is this a performance issue? Now, if it's a billing issue, there's nothing we can do about that. That belongs in some other department. But if it's a performance issue, we can break this into one of four areas. It's a radio performance issue, it's a core network performance issue, it's a device performance issue, or it's an actual reachability of the service issue. And then we can zoom out and say, is it just you, the individual, who has the problem with the service, or has everyone got the problem? So you start to triage at the sort of tier two level, and from there you pass a rich trouble ticket to the network team that says, we've got location, we've got timestamp, we've got the MZ, we've got the IMEI, and we've got this set of measures that we've got. Now you go and look for the root cause, and then the feedback to the end consumer can be immediate, or at least it can be uh, based on knowledge of the network and the service performance. So the technical support teams from tier one to tier two to tier three, you can see as these issues rattle around today within the mobile operator, uh, tier two looks at it, can't really find out what's going on, and of course the costs uh, escalate as you go from one to two to three, and the skills required to solve the problem gets much more complex. So you can see how the business model can be built up. In terms of real user benefits, this is real customer data. You know, you're looking at significant percentages and reduction of average handling times of the calls. You're looking at rebate reductions. Uh, you're looking at uh, the reduction in mean time to repair, getting back to the customer with, with issue, you know, res resolution of the issue. And very often what we find at the mobile operators today, there's a big focus on the high ARPU people, the VIPs, the enterprise customers, and ultimately uh, rolling it out to the consumer. Uh, we hope to see that over the next one to two years. And then there's always a lot of soft benefits of improved customer experience. So if you're in a call that typically takes 15 to 20 minutes, uh, and you then reduce that down to five minutes, you can see the benefits, uh, both from an internal cost perspective, the number of calls you can handle, and also the benefit to the end consumer. And it's not much different from you phoning your bank uh, and saying, I've got three uh, sort of triplicate uh, outputs from my bank in terms of the statement, and you have to diffuse that angry customer. You have to be able to tell them, well, actually, it was a mistake on our part. Uh, everything's okay, and the customer's then happy. So we, we go through a lot of uh, discussions with end consumers, with the CSRs, to see if we can improve the methods and uh, reduce uh, the anxiety, if you like, for these consumers, and then the ultimate is to try and offer them a better package and upsell them. Just a few screenshots for the, the technical people in the room uh, and also just the, the sort of data we collect, a uh, bit of an eye test here, but uh, per user visibility, so at one level it's a set of uh, sort of red, amber, green. The next level is we can go into the device inventory, we can go into the radio performance, we can look at the throughput, the latency, all of those network uh, challenges, and we can also ping various services like Salesforce compared to BBC iPlayer compared to CNN, and we can actually look for reachability tests. At the enterprise level, we can roll this up into an enterprise report. So an example of that would be where an enterprise customer uh, is looking at selecting their 
their preferred mobile operator, and we can roll this up in terms of how, what percentage of time did they spend on 2G, 3G, 4G. Uh, the solution is, is cloud-based, and it runs at the HTTP layer, so it's agnostic uh, in many ways to the technology types. So we can roll up a set of statistics in terms of how often you were able to reach the service, how long it took to reach the service, and provide these for the CIOs. And just in terms of packages for the big data people, again, uh, you can start to see that once you roll out a volume of software clients, you can start to realize that you can do network comparisons, you can cut this data by uh, latency, by cell, uh, by location, by device types, you can do device type comparisons. So nothing new in this slide for the people who are uh, into big data analytics. And then you know, things like worst per cell radio performance. But what I'd like to do is, hopefully I've given you a flavor for what SQL does. Just to summarize, uh, client-server architecture, software put onto the end device, particularly for the business case of customer service, but also the ability to perform studies and do comparisons. And this part of the presentation is more about the future. So imagine that you have this uh, quality of experience utility. Uh, the next stage in our evolution and where we're going with this is we're now starting to talk to uh, the whole challenge of over-the-top revenues. Uh, so what we've done is because we measure the performance in real time, we can do, take subjective feedback from panelists and we can do a direct comparison of their view of their service experience against the network that underpinned that service at exactly that point in time. So let's ask 100 panelists to go and watch a specific YouTube video with 10 e DPI streaming. And as, we, as they're watching it, and we've asked them to watch it for one minute, we're measuring the underpinning network and we correlate the two. And what we have found is a direct correlation. It's about 90% uh, accurate. So an example of that would be, uh, let's take Twitter. Twitter as an application is really an IM. So we've got 50 KB throughput and we've got a latency of one second. Uh, the user doesn't care. If you translate those network parameters to uh, YouTube streaming video or Netflix or any streaming video, uh, they just don't work. So you'll be very disappointed. So you get a different customer experience dependent on the actual network performance. So what this picture here is all about is in all of this plethora of applications that are out there today, unlike a few years ago where the devices weren't capable and the content wasn't available, that is not true today. There is loads of content, there's loads of devices, the world has moved on. And what I am putting to the uh, OMA today is that quality of experience and another area is security will be the two things that will, I think, inhibit the huge potential growth in the revenues that could be generated from these types of applications. I can also move into mission-critical applications, such as banking. I can move into mHealth, where you go to Africa, where you only have one surgeon who is then, uh, over a video link, trying to help uh, a local GP uh, perform an operation or a particular procedure. So there's lots of applications where there is uh, always the opportunity for increased revenues, provided that the applications are workable and that you can guarantee the quality of experience and service. So just in terms of uh, all the things, the consumers uh, are losing patience. You know, the expectation is that when you dial up a service, this is a, a graph I picked up from a report, and what it really shows is within five or ten seconds, people really give up. They're not going to really keep on trying. Um, and so this is, again, potential for lost revenue. The patience associated with expectations that the industry has set, uh, we've got 4G, LTE, everything's running very fast. We've got phones with, you know, gigabits of memory, we've got CPUs that are really, uh, we've got big screens, we've got tablets. So expectations are that this works and we don't have to wait for 20 seconds to get a connection. That's just not workable in the, in the, in the future world. So a couple of examples. In mobile banking, uh, talking to a number of the big banks in the UK, and where we're at is the provocation is really about, does a significant percentage of your customers get frustrated with mobile banking? I, I won't disclose in the forum today the percentages of uptake for these banks in terms of mobile uh, payment, but what you do have is a business case that says, if we can push more mobile banking onto the consumer and onto the SMB, SME community, then we can probably close some of our brands. Uh, we don't really need them. You add into this ATM location and all of a sudden you can start to see where the evolution of mobile banking uh, and payments is headed. So they're lacking confidence. Consumer confidence is lacking in terms of accelerating the uptake. And also it's a strategic initiative which is really about trying to reduce the costs. 
So our, our proposition to them, the proposal is, with this QOE utility, just like my op, my O2, my Vodafone, etc., can you take this utility, embed it into your banking application, and you get the same benefits that today the mobile operators are getting. And that's really, I think, where I can see a lot of benefit for the consumer and a lot of benefit for uh, the, the banks in this particular case. A second area is media players. So this just happens to be conversations again with uh, the, the television companies today who are pushing uh, repeats of their programs. And also the second dimension to this is uh, video uh, ad insertions. So again, we ran a set of panelists and what we did was we said, re watch the reruns of the various programs on this website, which they did, and give us your feedback. And the second part of it was, did the video ad that was inserted actually complete? And again, I've got statistics on the completion rates, but fair to say, in the old world of video ad or on advertising, when you had the first page, 99.99% was not uncommon, but I can guarantee you when you come to mobile, it is nothing like that. The failure rate on video ad completion is, is huge. And again, there's a significant revenue stream that brings a dynamic between the content providers the expectations and the amount of monies they're paying to mobile operators, whereas in actual fact the end consumer never saw the advert. So it's a very different world when it comes to video advertising. So again, the proposition or the proposal to these uh, companies are, uh, we can provide you best connection. So let me take a little bit of a, a step back on the technology. What we also have working with a number of partners around the world is the ability uh, to provide best connection. You know, I could ask a question to the audience. How often have you got frustrated with the fact that you have been on your mobile phone trying to look at emails and there's no coverage, but you've actually got Wi-Fi, at least 10 Wi-Fi hotspots around you? And I, I would say the people in this room would say every single time. I just experienced it. Just two weeks in the US, frustrated all the time. Couldn't get on email, couldn't download information, couldn't get my slide presentations, etc. So what, what we're doing with these partners who are uh, producing the Wi-Fi offload uh, software, we're embedding the same utility into their application. And for the technical people in the room, what we're looking at is policy controls. So effectively today, we would say Wi-Fi offload is pretty dumb. So if you go to the US and you look at someone like Sprint working with Boingo as a Wi-Fi aggregator, uh, they will offload you to Wi-Fi because their LTE or the 4G network is saturated. But what if you could actually have intelligence inside the utility which uh, makes that decision, helps with that decision? What was your experience before and after? And by the way, because you want to negotiate over the top revenues, we can onload you again because you're really an important customer and we'll bring you back or you're someone that's using some of the over-the-top revenues. So when share uh, comes, you can, you can do that as well. So this is uh, some of the provocations that we're putting into the market, uh, not directly aimed at mobile operators, but aimed at the content providers. So an example of that is we have an application that does predictive performance. So what this will do is if you download this one from uh, the Google Play Store, what you'll see is within about five seconds, if you've got a reasonable network, uh, you'll actually get a prediction of how well those five or six applications are going to run. And we've set the algorithms and thresholds in those based on the subjective feedback. So that's, that's, that's how these stars appear, based on a number of users who have given us feedback as to network performance is X, therefore service performance will be Y. And this is what you'll experience as an end user. And we can do that by location. This is the Wi-Fi offload diagram. This one was really aimed at mobile uh, operators, and obviously you can see the benefits to them. But again, think of putting this into the market in a different way, actually aiming it at the consumer, i.e. as the best connection possible. So that no matter where you are, any time, any place, assuming you've got some radio access, whether it be Wi-Fi or mobile, you will have the best connection possible. The best connection possible means that the end user, the consumer, will always be using applications. And they can get access to those applications and again use more of it, therefore driving revenues higher as a result and removing the barrier. So I'm not sure how much time I've got, but this is my last slide, Tim. Um, you know, in terms of where we are with standardization, what are the barriers? Uh, we're seeing uh, multiple different uh, APIs on devices. We're seeing uh, things like ANSIF protocols, uh, EAP, when you've got the SIM available. Uh, there's no consistency with a lot of this. It's all done on a, on a special to type basis. And you can see the words here from some of the customers I've spoken to and from the development team 
In the long term, I guess the proprietary Wi-Fi offload will go away. We'll see convergence. And I think is this utility uh, in terms of thinking ahead to the future uh, as part of, for example, the OMA DM, where you look at mobile device management. You know, could this type of capability be built in, pushed to the end devices for the benefit of the consumer so that we remove some of these barriers to revenue growth over the next five to ten years? Because the fact is that pretty much all of the high value over the top revenue services are video. And because they're video, streaming video, uh, I think you'll agree that uh, that is going to put the biggest demand on the network. And therefore, uh, we need to make sure that before we start uh, pushing into M Health or M uh, Commerce and banking and payments, that the consumer confidence is increased as a result of measures that we can perform. And the final comment from my team is this is not going to happen anytime soon. So a challenge to the people in the room to see if there's some standardization we could bring to this to accelerate uh, the hard yards that we have had over the last couple of years trying to push this through very bespoke, you know, every individual is different, uh, HTC, Samsung devices, MiFi devices, uh, new APIs that are common. You know, we could talk about Apple, very closed, versus Android and Windows and BlackBerry that you can extract a lot of this uh, performance information. So I'm not talking about URLs, I'm not talking about privacy, I'm talking about fixing your performance issues and getting ahead of, uh, ahead of the game by being predictive. Tim. <laughs>